Welcome to Drawing with Lord Carnage. What I'm doing today is adding some design elements and playing with the design of the Magnum 9000 helicopter over the model that I sculpted out of clay last week. So I'm doing this in Photoshop. I'm making a layer and then drawing on top of the, um, the photograph layer and playing with the look and feel of this thing so that I'll eventually come up with a final design on screen and then sculpt a new model, bake that, and then use that model as the, uh, the model for Magnum 9000 in, uh, in the series. So let's get started and have some fun with Magnum Skywolf. Last week I sculpted this model of the Magnum 9000 helicopter and it's rough, but I think it gives me a good starting point for the design work. And, and this should be fun for those of you who like design work, because I'm, I'm literally going to be creating the entire Magnum Skywolf universe over the next couple weeks. Um, because unlike my other comic strip, Disco 8-Track, I don't really have any of the design elements done for Magnum Skywolf. Uh, Disco 8-Track has its own unique challenges, uh, but, but for this one I'm designing the helicopter, I'm designing his van, I'm, I'm, dr I'm going to be adapting the El Camino design into a different car which looks similar to an El Camino, of course, because that's you know, the best car in the universe. I'm going to be creating all of the supporting characters. Any good 80s TV show has supporting characters, like Magnum P.I., for example, has Rick and T.C. and Higgins. Well, Magnum Skywolf will have his own supporting characters. And I've got to create all of that, and I've got to create the locations. So, um, the most important part of it, though, is the central vehicle, the Magnum 9000 helicopter. Hunter Skywolf, the character, is already more or less done. So uh, let's, let's get started here. I'm gonna pull up a pretty big brush and I wanna just, I'm gonna go over the design. This is the first time I've ever done this, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the layout of this thing. I wanna see what it's like to draw. I wanna add a few things. I know I wanna smooth out the back here and add, add the jet engine back there. And, um, You see the shape of this. That, that's why I like to use the modeling clay. I can get a sense for the shape of it. I do the tail fin. I want to keep the tail fin out of the way of the giant nuclear powered thruster back here. Very important, I think. Because realism matters <laughs> when, when designing a nuclear powered helicopter that flies faster than the speed of sound. So now that I dropped the background out, you can see what this is starting to look like, and I can get a sense for the flow of this thing. I really want it to be mean. I want to bring this cockpit way down to the front. And there is going to be a um, gun pod down here, of course, which I'll design in detail later, but basically it'll be a couple different weapons and some radar equipment and a flamethrower hanging off the front. I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll deal with that later. Uh, it's also got a giant um, missile. He's also got a giant missile underneath him. In case you need to launch that. And a couple sub-weapons over here in the, under the wings. There's going to be three machine guns in his wings. I'm going to have a gun pod up front. Actually, two gun pods up front because you can never have enough guns. And then I'll, once again, reflect a lot of the changes that I'm making in these in these designs once I make up my mind and do, do like a final one in the uh, next model that I make. Let's carry that through. And here's the rotors. The intakes would be here, and they're going to be slung back, so you're going to see them open up from like that from the top, and then come straight back like that. Now you're going to have your uh, one vent there, your other part of the reactor thing there, and you might just see the rocket beneath it. And of course, the, uh, the the giant machine gun, the flamethrower, design this stuff. I'll do a design for that. Like the gun turret itself is going to require its own design session. 
but it's not really, but you could theoretically take that on and off and replace it with other things. Like for one mission, you may want to have a giant, uh, like a rail gun or something on the front. Here's another angle. This is looking at it from the front and I'm going to be doing a similar thing. I want to bring this cockpit way down where it kind of looks like space car a little bit. I guess my years of growing up with Robotech and whatnot have uh, influenced me to make everything look like the front of an F-15 uh, or 14 or something. I'm getting my design work down here, making this look like the helicopter. I like the wings. The wings are good because you can hang things under them, like missiles. All right, this design is a little more detailed than some of the other ones, and deal with his uh, guns there later. The beginnings of Magnum 9000. You do not want to be on the receiving end of the Magnum 9000. That line there, that line there. Gun, gun, gun. This thing here. Oops. Make that black. The tail thingies are going to be black. And then we'll do a lot more detail work on the exhaust later. By we, I mean me, I guess. Right. Well, what do you think? The beginnings of Magnum Nine Thousand. supersonic, nuclear-powered, deadly, with a great sound system. If you can't rock out to some good music while blowing up enemies. I mean, we haven't learned anything from Top Gun and Iron Eagle, right? Iron Eagle did that the best. When he just basically hit, hit play on his cassette player. A lot of you kids probably have no idea what Iron Eagle is. Look that one up. That's worth it. It's not as well known as Top Gun. It's not as good as Top Gun. But it's still good. Oh yeah. And you should watch Blue Thunder while you're at it. And there'll be like hoses and stuff being... I think you'll see some hoses and whatnot connecting to the, the, uh, the jet engine. And the reactors in here are sort of like a mid-engine race car, except it's a uh, you know heavily armed helicopter. And this is all this is all venting up top here. These aren't weapons; these are vents. So that's what I'm looking at from that angle. But I'd like to I'd like to see more of the window. So let's bring the window down like that. Plus, that would give the pilot. Hunter, Skywolf, some more lateral vision. There we go. Anytime you start adding stuff that looks like it belongs in the space program, I think you know you're doing a good job. This thing could pretty much break orbit, in fact. Fairly confident that's going to happen in the series at some point. Now I got a lot of little fiddly bits I'm going to have to deal with here. I think there should be hoses everywhere for this because you know they basically, the designers who made this thing basically took the reactor out of a submarine and a rocket from the space program and shoved them into a helicopter and put on a whole lot of guns and a cassette player and it's just awesome that's science Magnum 9000, some sketches for today, some things to think about, and then uh, I'm going to actually incorporate some designs where it's like landing, where it's, or incorporate this design into some shots where it's landing, and where we see some people around it, like interacting with it, and where it's going to be blowing things up, like uh, other, like lesser vans, 
motorcycles, um, sports cars, people running away from it, bad guys, buildings. And it sounds like a shark when it flies, by the way. Not sure what a shark sounds like. That will be uh, one of the jokes, of course. Before you hear Magnum 9000, you'll be too dead to see it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And you can see these drawings at patreon.com slash Magnum Skywolf and uh, follow the adventure there. Follow the creation process. Get yourself some sweet pre-release perks. And of course, June 3rd, the actual series begins after I've designed all of the characters and vehicles and locations because there's also going to be a volcano uh, because Magnum 9000 obviously lives in a volcano. What helicopter worth anything does not live in a volcano? I want to keep away from any hard angles in this design. Um, I know a lot of the stuff to, to, for the, the, I know a lot of the, the more modern um, things meant to evade radar have those harsh angles everywhere. And maybe that would be more practical from a radar evasion standpoint, but Magnum 9000 evades enemies by killing them. And then there's no more enemies left to evade because they're dead, falling to the earth in little pieces on fire, soon to be eaten by sharks. You see, I put thought into this. Why outrun an enemy? You can just blow it to bits. Mm -hmm.